Okay, in this video, I want to demonstrate to you um, how to calculate uh, vertical stresses in soil in geotechnical engineering uh, calculations. Uh, calculate the stresses of a vertical effective stress and vertical total stress uh, based on a given soil profile um, and also how to uh, plot uh, a stress plot, uh, a graph uh, to, uh, to represent uh, the calculations. So here in screen, uh, you see uh, on my Excel files, there's a soil profile right there. Uh, we have sent in few materials on top of a clay layer. Uh, we know the unit weight of the soils, and also we know the uh, groundwater table, which is a 3.5 meter underneath uh, the, our grade, uh, the ground surface. So the first thing uh, that <clears throat> you want to do is to customize uh, the depth. Uh, on the uh, soil profile and we need to choose um, the increments because uh, uh, those now is based on uh, the steps or the the, uh, the increments that you want to choose and we have realized we have a soil profile from zeros to 21 meters so you can do it like every meters every two meters uh, the smaller the increments that uh, you you choose, uh, you do, then you'll be more accurate in a sense to capture any change. But you don't want to make it too small, otherwise you have a really long uh, spare sheet, a really long table, and you don't want it to be too coarse. If you, for example, if you do just do 10 meters uh, increments there, then you're not able to capture the change in seven meter. And realize that we have, uh, for this particular examples, we have a groundwater at 3.5 meter, so I would think, uh, I would suggest we use 0.5 meter as an, an increments, uh, such that we can capture the change of the groundwater table there. Uh, so <clears throat> I, I go down uh, on the depth, I go down every uh, 0.5 meter now, until I hit 21, which is the bottom of the uh, clay layer, uh, where we want to calculate our stress up to. And we put a meter right there, very important, always put down a unit. Next, uh, we, you would like to put down the uh, unit weight of the soil uh, at that particular uh, depth. And unit weight of the soils, uh, we use the symbol of gamma. And since we are doing SI unit here, then uh, the unit weight of soils is uh, kilo uh, newtons per meter trip. And it is given that for the sandy layers, sandy a uh, few layers, uh, we have uh, 17 kilo newtons uh, per meter as the soil weight. So everything is 17 until we hit the uh, the interface, which is a seven meter. And after that, our soil our unit weight change from uh, 17 to 15. So this is 15 for now until the whole layer of the clay. So we take care of the unit weight. Next uh, will be the key, um, is calculating the uh, total vertical stress. And the total vertical stress is has a unit symbol of sigma. And it is a stress, so it is a kilo newtons per meter squared. And to calculate this, uh, we need to look at each increment level. So, um, and, but and very obvious at the ground surface, we don't have any in, uh, overburden stress because you're at the top. So the stress right there is zero. And then when I just talk about the increments between zero point to point five, and when I calculate this, the stress again is equals to uh, unit weight of the soil times the thickness and for this particular 0.5 meters so with this 0.5 minus zero so the very first uh, layer with a 0.5 meter increments and then plus so we are talking about at that particular 0.5 meter layers and then plus the unit weight above it and the unit weight above it is uh is this a free few conditions so that's nothing so it's obvious it's zero so we finish calculate the stress at this particular layer from 0.5. Then we can repeat these calculations 
And actually, like, you know, you will be uh, uh, repeating. So uh, the calculation, so I can just drag it down. Then it automate, automate all the calculations for total stress for all the other subsequent uh, layer of each of them is the 0.5 meter thickness. If we check our math again, uh, we are looking at the layers between 0.5 uh, to 1 uh, meter. Then um, the total vertical stress is equal to the unit weight of the soils at that particular layer. So we're talking about somewhere 0 0.1, somewhere like you know, 1 meters to 0 0.5 right there. Um, and the unit weight uh, will be equal to uh, that particular thickness times the unit weight and then plus whatever above it, which is the 8.5 uh, 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 kilopascals right there. So on and so on. And uh, the interchange layer is not to be 7 to uh, 7.5, right? Because we have 7 meters right here, and the 7.5 is right there. And starting to be that uh, layer, uh, we start to have a unit weight of 15. So we need to check our math right here. So again, it's particular 15 right there. So we talk about this particular layer, 7.5 to 7. Uh, and then we have a unit weight of 15 and then times the thickness, which is 0.5 again, and then plus whatever uh, unit weight, oh, this the vertical stress above it. So with that, we, we took care of the, uh, the, the total vertical stress. Then uh, we do the water pressure. So water pressure, uh, the calculations is equals to the unit weight of water times uh, the thickness of the soil. And it starts when we encounter the water table. So, which means that we don't have any water pressure, poor water pressure, and then we keep, we are heating 3.5, uh, meter. So that's why, like, at the beginning, it's important for us to, to choose the, uh, uh the right, uh, increments such that, like, you know, now when we cover the water pressure, uh, we can, uh, define whatever above 3.5 is zero because we don't have the water table until we are heating the uh, water table at <coughs> uh, for the water depth of 0.5 meter at 3.5 uh, meter depth right here. So um, the uh, for SI unit, for the unit weight of water is 9.81 kilo newtons per meter cubes, and then times the thickness of this particular layer, 3.5 uh, minus 3, and then pass whatever about it. And uh, this is the first time we are encounter the water table at this particular layer. So that's why we don't have any water pressure above it. But later, we will have it. Because for example, here, the second layers. Again, uh, the water pressure will be equal to uh, this particular layer, 3.5 to 4 meters. So the difference between the two is 0.5 uh, meters as we uh, originally uh, set uh, at the beginning uh, of this calcul uh, special calculations. Um, so we have this particular layers times the unit weight of water again, and then pass whatever above it. So that gives you the water pressure at the depth of four meters. So we calculate the, uh, the water pressure, um, and then we can calculate the effective stress. And this part is uh, relatively simple. Because we know the effective stress is equal to the total stress minus the water pressure. And then we bring all this down, and this is our uh, effective stress. Effective stress. Okay, so after we calculate um, all these three stress stresses, uh, we don't want to stop there because uh, the calculations uh, now uh, is nice in a way that is see all the numbers but it cannot tell you the big picture so uh, we want to plot out our results uh, we will use a chart here excels um, i suggest use a scale up plot and we want to make it long and if we after we put on an uh, empty chart like this we right click on it and then say select data and we add our new first one uh, it would be the total stress versus the depth, and I'll show you how to do this. So uh, on a stress part, x-axis will be the stress, so this time is the uh, 
the total vertical stress, and the y-axis is the depth. And we want to upside down our uh, vertical stress, uh, sorry, upside down our plot, because again, in uh, geotechnical engineering, uh, we look underneath the ground, starting from the ground surface. So that's why we want to invert. So click OK for now. So uh, if you right click on our Y axis, and then we want to uh, the values in reverse order this way. So uh, the zero zero coordinate at top now. So this represents the ground surface here. If I put this down by side by side, so uh, this would be like about 21 meters right there. So this would be about 21, see my like a 21 meters, almost uh, matching my 21 uh, meter on the chart. So zero, zero here represents the ground surface. Uh, so this gives you the total stress and the slope slightly change a little bit because the slope from zero to seven meter is the uh, refracting the uni weight of the uh, soil at that layer. So um, the slope from zero to seven meters right here is the 17 kilonewton per meter crypts. Uh, and after seven meters, from seven meters to 21 meters, uh, the slope is 15 uh, as the unit weight of that particular layer. So here we plot our, our vertical stress and uh, we want to uh, uh, have a good representations of our results. So we need to take care of the details. Uh, first of all, we don't need the chart title here for now. Uh, you may for later, but for this uh, applications, uh, we don't need because we just want a stress plot. Uh, if you uh, click on this, like a, a chart element per sign here, or uh, uh, click the control buttons uh, from the keyboard as the shortcut, you can bring in the axis titled uh, and also bring in the, uh, the legends. So which we will need them uh, to uh, finish all the de detailings uh, of your graph. Okay, so if we, uh, now we can change uh, the axis title for X, which is the stresses with the unit of a kilo newtons, a kilo per scout to represent the kilo newtons per uh, meter, uh, meter square. And the Y axis is the depth and the unit is a meter. It's very, always very important to keep track of units. Uh, you want all the graph or the tables uh, always ha uh, have units on it. Then now you want to put the legends on this total stress. You click on it and one shortcut is uh, if you go to your formula bar here, uh, right after the parenthesis before the comma, you put your cursor there, you put like uh, quotations, and then uh, you insert the symbol of sigma right there, and then close it, and make sure you put the uh, the close uh, quotations right here. So this will give you the uh, the right legends that you want to have on the curve. So this is uh, a quick way to do it. Uh, if you get used to it, you can do it really quick. And then like our next thing, uh, you realize the font size here, you want to make it larger. This is hard to see now. So click on the uh, the axis here. If you bring up the font size, I like 12. So I bring up to 12, same as the Y axis, I bring up to 12. Uh, and I also want to fix the axial, axial title, you click on the graph, and then uh, increase the font size. So not only the axial, uh, a title but also the, the legend now also bring up to the size that you want and you want to bolt the, uh, the fonts then you can do it too so control B or click the, uh, uh, the bolt button here so now uh, it's more easy to see now for the uh, X the X or the axial title so again you may want to bolt all the axial titles uh, including your legend and you want to feel free to move this to the locations you want. Uh, I like the left lower corner because uh, the stress usually is uh, increased uh, you know, with depth. So it gives you some empty area, either your left hand lower corner or the uh, upper right. So maybe upper right is a bit of choice uh, since like, you know, we tend to look uh, to, to read from top to bottoms. 
and also you want to take care of the uh the uh the tick marks uh on the x and y axis i like uh for the major i like uh the using cross for the major and the uh minor use inside so you have to see, see the grid and uh, now this is like a in a lighter color you want to fix this into black so uh, easier to see so i will do the same thing with the y axis so uh this cross and this inside and then plus change this to black color um, and then it is optionals to get rid of the major grid lines i uh, usually like uh, i i regret get rid of it because now we have all these tick marks here uh, to visualize the serial data and make it more clean without any uh, grid lines right there. Uh, again, this is just my preference uh, for these applications. For other applications, that have other like a choices sense. Same deal, like you know, you can pick your own favorite. But uh, you want to make everything clean and neat. So now I finished the uh, the total stress, and then I can uh, go on to bring in the uh, water pressure. So I can put a U right there because now this is not a grid letter. So, you know, or whatever you want to say there will be easier. Uh, just put it in this box. And the X axis is the stress. So I click on this and then select uh, all the all the uh, calculations that I have for the pore water pressure. Uh, one shortcut is you can click on the very first um, uh, top mode, like a cell. And then uh, on your keyboard, you you press a uh, shift, the shift buttons, and then click on the bottoms. Then you automatically select uh, the whole uh, column that you want. And same thing here, the Y axis, I click on the topmost shift buttons on my keyboard, and then uh, the last, the bottommost uh, cell, then click, click enter. Then I select the water pressure. Um, and then I can also do the uh, effective stress since uh, it is uh, a Greek letter, so I cannot like uh, change uh, typing the name right there because it's a Greek uh, symbol. So uh, let's take it later. But again, like you know, the X is the stress, vertical effective stress here, and the Y is the depth right here. So now I want to go back to uh, to change this uh, legend here, and I go back to this box quotations and then insert the symbol which is the sigma and then a pine to represent the effective stress state and then close quotations and then enter and then this will change uh, if you like you can box it so make it more clean and clear right there so uh, with that this is my uh, stress plot and if you put this side by side you will see uh, clear now uh, how the stress a change. You don't have water pressure until you are hitting water tables and so forth and so forth. And if you want to make it perfect, you can change the marker uh, into a different symbol. So in case uh, where people print themselves uh, in a black and white uh, printer, it will be easier to see without the colorings. So you can change this maybe to triangles uh, for the uh, effective stress and something else uh, for the uh, for the uh, Pour water pressure. So with that, this is the uh, the, the stress calculations uh, for total vertical stress and uh, effective stress, and how to plot out the data. Uh, 